Okay, this is Walter Hollowell again, back in the garage. Uh, long block race car engine is finished. Now we're going to start prepping the race car for the racing season in 2021. I thought we'd talk about the front end of the car. So let's go take a look at the suspension parts that I'm using. I'm using the regular A-arms, and I'm using polyurethane bushings. And I just swapped those out a few months ago, and I was surprised and shocked at as how worn out and wallowed the ones that it, where I'd put in there before. They're about four years old. They had really needed to replace, and that was good. We're good here. I have full competition springs, and I prefer the Spax adjustable shocks, but there's other good shocks as well, Bilstein's and others. Steel braided brake lines. And I'm using a rapid uh, quick ratio steering rack. You have to be a little careful on those. I've had those pull apart on me in the middle of a race. And you turn the steering wheel and the car just goes straight. So you need to watch out on those. Now, obviously, this is your upright. And coming up out of the upright is the axle stub, which we call a spindle. Now, the stock spindles from the Triumph TR6 are fine for around town use, but if you autocross or road race them, they don't hold up. They flex too much. And what happens is you'll be going, even if you're autocrossing, twisting and turning, braking hard, and they flex, and this rotor will go this way, and it pushes the brake pads out on the calipers, and then you go into a corner and you don't have a brake pedal. You have to pump the brakes. So what I recommend is you get the hardened... Oh, and also, here's something that happened to me using a stock spindle and the bearings. The bearings were well greased and adjusted properly, but the bearings failed and they welded themselves to the tip of the axle, the spindle, and they broke off. And then there goes, there goes your wheel. So to prevent that again, I replaced the stock spindles with the uh, hardened spindles. I got them for good parts. And I also went ahead and put on their hubs, which is the half inch studs, which are good. But the main thing is it has bigger bearings, inner and outer bearings, and those are good. All these parts in road racing, if you go to high speed tracks like Sonoma, Circuit of the Americas, Road Atlanta, these parts get red hot, so it heats up, it cools down, heats up, it cools down, and that attributes to metal fatigue. On the back of the calipers, and these are the Toyota, I'm racing on a budget, so these are the Toyota 4Runner uh, FJ 4-piston calipers. Now, you have to be careful. In some cases, uh, going to 4-piston calipers will bump you up a class, but I think it's safer and it's easier to do, so check who you want to race with. On the back side of this caliper are two mounting bolts. They're pretty big. Um, I didn't see in the book what to torque them down to, so I'm thinking somewhere in the 40, 50 pound, foot pound range. I actually had one shear off in a race, the bottom one, and of course the caliper pivoted up inside the wheel, it locked the wheel, and then you go off the track. So I recommend swapping those bolts out every three or four years because they don't last forever and carry spares with you. Now, when it comes to, oh, and I'm using the um, dual-plated rotors, cross-drilled and ventilated. This is not as light of a system as maybe the Willwoods is, but I don't have any brake fade, so if we're racing on a budget, it works pretty good. Now, when it goes to taking out your old brake pads at the end of the season or before, and this is what came out, it's about time to swap them. You take the parts out, and these locating pins, you want to use some brake cleaner and clean them with 3M, get them good and shiny, and then lubricate them up with some WD-40 or something when you put them back in. Now, these are my new racing brake pads. And something I learned the hard way is you want to measure the thickness that will fit and for me, it's 0.585. And 
When I ordered my first set, I got them and it wasn't the brake company's fault. They were too thick and I couldn't install them. I had to send them back and get them cut back down. But now I know the size that I need to order for a new set. You just send them the old backing plate and they'll grind this off and put new material on. And the size thickness that you need, you put in your little book that I recommended that you do for parts. Also, uh, it's a good idea, in my opinion, to scuff up your new pads with some sandpaper a little bit. And then the break-in process is very specific on racing pads. And you want to make sure you follow what's in the box on a piece of paper. Otherwise, um, you'll have bad results. They'll glaze over. These are expensive pads. They're like $200, $205 for the set for both sides. Um, but you want to break them in very, very, very properly. And that's pretty much it uh, for the front suspension. Oh, also on the bearings, um, I like to use a full synthetic. Um, Amsoil makes a marine grade full synthetic that I think is very good for the bearings, for the wheel bearings, inner and outer. And that pretty much does it for this chapter of the front end of my TR6 race car. Oh, one more thing. Up here, uh, I'll show you, this is the company that I order my brake pads from and their contact information. And then this is the friction material that I've used. And again, this is for full speed road racing.